Black Adder is one of those all-time classic British sitcoms. If you haven't seen Black Adder, then I suggest you watch it right now. It's just brilliant. Warwick, I would advise you to make the explanation you were about to give phenomenally good. <laughs> you said get the door. Not good enough, you're fired. <laughs> but my lord, I've been in your family since 1532. So is syphilis, now get out. <laughs> Despite its awkward first season, I think no one can deny that seasons two through four have the dynamic and chemistry down perfectly. At a chump though he may be, at least he's not French. Ah, <laughs> oh, not noir, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ever shoot myself. Oh, shame. I find this film's about as funny as getting an arrow through the neck and then discovering there's a gas bill tied to it. However, what you might not have known is that there was an American adaptation in the works. Eh, uh, kind of. 1775 was the unsuccessful pilot for a period sitcom set just before the American Revolution. The proposed series has often been credited as being inspired by Blackadder, and this is evidence throughout. You've got a snarky and sarcastic lead character, often viewing things in a pessimistic light, a clumsy and socially inept individual with the habit of landing our lead in difficult situations, a bumbling and idiotic assistant, and a rich and powerful superior to our main character, who actually behaves more like a child. The plot of the pilot episode follows Jeremy Proctor, an inky and brother-in-law of George Washington, who runs the inn with his various daughters and wife. In an attempt to ensure his daughters all marry well, he needs to try and gather enough funds to send his daughters to an upcoming ball. Now, of course the series wasn't really an adaptation, it simply bore some similarities, but hey, I know what you guys are here for. You want to hear me talk about the comedy, don't you? Well, here we go. All of the comedy in 1775 is just sort of, eh. As in, it's not cringe-inducing or particularly offensive, it's just really a whole lot of nothing. I was surprised just how boring it felt, and then I realised I was only 12 minutes into an episode, it felt like just so much longer. Now, the comedy isn't so bad. Some moments are at least mildly funny. What's the profit of one beer anyway? 0.87 shillings. I calculated yeah, the math. Yeah, good, fine, fine, just clean up the mess. <laughs> I wasn't laughing out loud, but occasionally I could recognise something as... Humorous. However, I'd say that 1775 lacks that sharp edge that Blackadder had down so well. For example, compare these two similar scenes in which someone is wearing ridiculous clothing. What are you wearing round your neck? Ah, uh, it's my new ruff. You look like a bird of swallowed a plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's the latest fashion, actually, and as a matter of fact, it makes me look rather sexy. To another plate-swallowing bird, perhaps? <laughs> if it was blind and hadn't had it in months. <laughs> <laughs> you look like an idiot. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. You know, they used to say that about my father. Blackadder not only gives us a funny image of a plate-swallowing bird, but also has the merit of the comic delivery. 1775 relies solely on the delivery, since the phrase, you look like an idiot, isn't nearly as creative or funny as, you look like a bird that swallowed a plate. And sadly, the delivery just isn't enough to carry the joke through. Whilst Percy has just enough self-awareness in him to rebut that what he's wearing is the height of fashion, Bert instead just thanks Jeremy for calling him an idiot, since his father was also called an idiot. You see, when writing an idiotic character, you need to make sure they are ignorant without being completely brain dead. Edmund, Edmund, come quickly, the Queen wants to see you. What? I said, uh, Edmund, Edmund, come quickly, the Queen wants to see you. And if you do want to make them intensely inept, you need to make sure their shenanigans are funny too. There's a difference between thinking an insult is a compliment, and what Baldrick does here. I'm carving something on this bullet, sir. What are you carving? I'm carving Baldrick, sir. <laughs> Why? It's a cunning plan, actually. Uh, of course it is. You see, you know they say that somewhere there's a bullet with your name on it. <laughs> Well, I thought if I owned the bullet with my name on it, I'd never get hit by it. Part of what made Blackadder great was throwing a completely ordinary and sane man into a world of utter mental cases. Often Edmund's various attempts at weaseling his way up to the top would be met with failures, usually caused by one of the idiots he's surrounded by. Edmund's sharp and sarcastic remarks were some of the highlights of the show. You rooted for him and he became a focus point for the viewer. Despite his scheming and scumbag ways, he was a likeable character who you wanted to succeed but you knew never could. And when you don't quite get a character like that down, it can impact the enjoyment of the show. Jeremy Proctor 
daughter will occasionally make a sarcastic comment, but mostly seems to complain a lot and comes across as merely an angry worrier. We're talking about five tickets, and we have to get new dresses for the girls, and we can't take our regular coach. No, we'll have to have the stretch coach. And I don't know if it's permeated that female brain of yours yet, but have you got any idea what this is going to cost? Not to mention his motivation isn't one the audience can really identify with. Whilst Edmund clearly just wanted wealth and personal gain, Jeremy's motivation is to get his daughters married well. This makes it harder to feel like you're rooting for him. There's a slight reference to how he's struggling financially, but without focus it gets lost in the script. Overall, Jeremy is just difficult to vouch for. He's not especially likeable, and his motivations are just sort of cloudy and boring. This means the audience is less interested in seeing him or anyone succeed. There's a variety of other characters, including his daughters, one of whom is book smart but socially inept, another who is obsessed with her beauty and living in luxury, and finally the rebellious stroppy one who I think wants a horse or something. But it's not fair, all my friends have horses. Each are okay, the nerdy one probably being the best realised out of the three, but they lack any real extreme characterisation or dynamic. There's also Adam West as George Washington. Adam has an awesome voice, and his character is probably one of the more entertaining examples, playing a sort of toned down mix of Melcher and Queen Elizabeth. This one's a drummer. <laughs> And this one's an Indian fighter, see his little coonskin cap. But even in the still not quite enough to make him memorable. Overall though, we can't be too harsh on 1775. It was merely a pilot after all, so not every character could be fully developed to their full potential. And whilst it was inspired by Blackadder, comparing it directly is also unfair. I think I can argue, however, that the overall episode could have used a more engaging and relatable focus, some more creative writing choices, and stronger character personalities. So that was the so-called American Blackadder. Not bad, not great, just, eh, uh, a prime example of mediocrity. In the end though, I think we can all be happy that Blackadder has remained British and will hopefully stay British forever.